seems to me that this was the end of an era in American politics, a great exclamation point in our national history. The Oval Office is one of the most iconic facets of the American presidency, but what about the art that inhabits it? I came across a New York Times article the other day called The Art of the Oval Office Tells a Story and Here's How to See It by Larry Buchanan and Matt Stevens. If you're interested in presidential stuff like I am, I really recommend giving it a read. The article discusses how a president's choice of artwork is often a quite deliberate one with very specific intentions. They cited a quote from presidential biographer John Meacham, who served as an advisor on President Biden's choice of artwork. The Oval Office decoration often reflects a president's view of history and the nature of his hopes for the future. If the president tells you that RFK is his hero, it makes sense why he would want his hero behind him while he's doing his important stuff. Of course, Trump did this with Churchill and Obama did it with Lincoln. The article notes that one of the most unique aspects of Biden's Oval Office is just the sheer amount of artwork that it has compared to previous ones. For example, most presidents only hang one or two portraits of great American leaders by the fireplace, while Biden has hung five. George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson, and Franklin Roosevelt. Washington and Lincoln are usually the stars because they're the two presidents that most people can agree are generally good, but in this case, they're off to the side. On the other side, we find Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. If you're familiar with this period at all, or if you've just seen Hamilton, you know that these two men hated each other, and they represented diametrically opposed ideologies. Representatives for Biden acknowledged that the placement was purposeful as hallmarks of how differences of opinion expressed within the guardrails of the Republic are essential to democracy. This certainly makes sense, because whether or not you agree with it, President Biden certainly sees himself as someone who can get along with people from both sides of the aisle. He's been in government since my parents were in elementary school, so I would sure hope so. Most presidents display Washington or Lincoln over the fireplace, but Biden chose to display FDR with a much more prominent placement than anybody else. Joe Biden has really tried to align himself with the legacy of Franklin D. Roosevelt and the New Deal. Regardless of what Biden has actually done and whether or not you agree with it, he has certainly used progressive rhetoric. President Trump did something similar when he displayed a painting of Andrew Jackson very prominently in his office, invoking Jackson's legacy of populism. Some people say this was racially insensitive, given Jackson's frankly abhorrent record with Native Americans, but think of that what you will. Okay, I felt like I needed to stand up to give this video the energy that it deserves. It feels like a lifetime ago, but I remember during the early days of the Trump administration, there was some sort of mini controversy because a reporter thought that Trump had removed a bust of Martin Luther King Jr. that had been displayed by Obama. But it turned out that this wasn't true and that the bust had actually just been moved to a different part of the office where it wasn't visible in that particular photo. It seems like a pretty honest mistake that the reporter corrected less than an hour later. Members of the Trump administration went out of their way to clarify that the bust was in fact still in the Oval. It's actually really funny because the article about Biden's Oval Office art notes that the statues of Bobby Kennedy and Martin Luther King are displayed very close to each other in the office, despite the fact that Kennedy authorized wiretaps of MLK while he was Attorney General. <laughs> they ended up working together later on though, so I guess it all works out. Harry Truman has what I must admit is the most unique presidential fireplace, with his predecessor and former running mate Franklin Roosevelt on the left, George Washington, the father of our country, on the right, and in the middle, Latin American revolutionary Simone Bolivar. <laughs> I was extremely curious about this Truman and Bolivar connection because it seemed like a very unexpected crossover. Admittedly, I don't know much about Bolivar myself, but from my understanding, it seems like Truman and other American leaders admire how Bolivar stood against Spanish colonialism in Latin America. I honestly didn't expect a 20th century American president to admire a anti-colonial Latino leader considering America's role in Latin America during that century, but surprises happen. Check out this book that I have. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool book. It's a book that just kind of talks about the presidency overall and in it is a couple of presidential portraits. I'll have people like Taft. 
Uh, let me see if I could find some of my favorite presidential portraits in here. Johnson, I love Johnson's portrait. You can't see it in the back, but it usually has Congress. I'll probably put, throw a picture of that up on the screen, but Johnson's portrait is one of my favorites. Yeah, there's Lincoln. I'm gonna talk about this Lincoln one later on in the video. But first, a word from our sponsor. I wanted to take a moment to announce our partnership with Bobbletopia here on the channel. If you click the link down below and you use the code Andre Dutra, you will get 10% off on your bobblehead of choice. Any purchase that you make directly helps out the channel and I wouldn't be here without you guys. So I appreciate that you've gotten us to this point where I can have a partnership with a pretty cool company. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I have a pretty cool FDR bobblehead and that is from Bobbletopia. If you want your own bobbleheads, please make sure to check them out. Remember that it directly helps out the channel and that it's a great way to support me. Presidential artwork is also just a very enjoyable thing to talk about when it comes to presidents. I am an adult, albeit a young adult, and I recognize that presidents are very complicated. No matter how much you love or hate a president, I guarantee they have done at least something in office that you personally find morally repugnant. That is the nature of the presidency. It is complicated and it is nasty and it can represent some of the darkest aspects of humanity. Knowing this, there is still a childlike part of my brain that's like, whoa, presidents. Cool. I think that that sense of wonder is the reason that a lot of us got into American history. And I think that it's important to maintain that even as you talk about these very, very complex and at times dark subjects. I have always been fascinated by presidential artwork. I frankly just find the imagery to be very beautiful. I know virtually nothing about visual art and art interpretation, but looking at these portraits of Lincoln and Kennedy, I see both men in a sort of of quiet contemplation, almost as if they know the tragedy of how their stories ended. The Lincoln portrait in particular is surrounded by darkness, with the only splash of color being the blood red chair and floor. Obviously, Lincoln's presidency was one of the darkest moments in American history, and you should check out my last video to find out why. Another great detail of this painting is that no matter what darkness and bloodshed he encountered, this great man in his quiet contemplation saw a ray of light, a hope for this nation. This light can be interpreted as a nod to Lincoln's tragic death. And while I'm sure that's true to some extent, with the light being behind him, I see that light as representing a more hopeful future for America that Lincoln will not get to see. A presidency engulfed in darkness, yet hopeful for a brighter tomorrow. I'm probably gonna be out of focus, but you know what, that's okay. I remember seeing photos of Obama's Oval Office about two years ago, and this beautiful painting immediately stuck out to me. So much so that I made it the wallpaper on my phone, where it stayed for a very long time. I didn't even do it because I associated it with Obama. I did it because it was this beautiful picture that was simultaneously presidential and artsy. This gorgeous picture is called The Avenue in the Rain, and it was painted in 1917 by Impressionist painter Child Hassam. Hassam also painted 30 other artworks in the same style. Hassam's artwork was inspired by two similar paintings by artist Claude Monet that depict French flags flying in the streets of Paris. I'm sure you can see the resemblance. <laughs> the Avenue in the Rain was originally hung up during the Clinton administration before being brought back by Obama and now Biden. From what I understand, the painting doesn't have much meaning behind it. It's uncontroversial and it's gorgeous to look at, so it's a pretty safe choice. Upon writing this video, The Avenue in the Rain has returned to my home screen. There it is, in all its glory. You might be asking yourself, why do I love this painting so much? And it's just because it's pretty, and it reminds me of American history and culture, which are two things that I'm incredibly passionate about, if you can't tell by my YouTube channel. Sometimes we choose art for a very cynical and explicit purpose, and sometimes we choose art just because we like the way it looks. Obviously, if you're a president, there's a million things you need to take into to account when you're deciding what art to display, but presidents are people too, and sometimes they might just like a piece of art. In fact, I hope that there is a president who is human enough to choose a piece of art just because they like it. Hi, my name is Andre, and on this channel I make videos about history, media, and culture. If you made it this far into the video, I hope that that means that you enjoyed it. 
if that's the case, then I hope that you would consider leaving a like, subscribing, and maybe even a comment down below letting me know what you thought. Thank you so much, and I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I will see you later.